everybody. Welcome to the Thursday edition live stream of Plant of the Week. I am Sarah Smith. I am a horticulturalist and I work here at Rogers Gardens. And today I'm going to be talking to you about what our Plant of the Week is. And if you don't know yet, it's milkweed. <laughs> so uh, this is the native milkweed here. Uh, we only sell native milkweed here at Rogers Gardens. We stopped selling the tropical milkweed uh, about two years ago, I want to say. Um, and there's a good reason for that. Uh, if you've grown tropical milkweed in the past, you know that that's the one with the yellow, uh, red or orange flower to it. And uh, the big issue that we're having here in Southern California with that is that it doesn't go dormant. So it is tropical, it lives through the winter time. Um, and that's becoming an issue for the monarchs. Milkweed is the only plant that monarch caterpillars eat. Uh, butterflies do a lot of different nectar plants, so there's a lot of food sources for the adult butterflies, but for the caterpillars, there's one thing that they eat, and that is milkweed. And it could be tropical, it could be native, it could be anything, so they'll eat it all. Uh, but the issue is, is that the tropical doesn't go dormant, and that becomes a problem because there's a protozoa naturally on the milkweed. Monarch caterpillars are pretty smart. The monarch caterpillars are actually poisonous to birds, so they're really smart. They eat something that has a slight toxicity to it, and that is uh, the protozoa. But the problem is, is that if it doesn't go dormant, it builds up and it gets higher and higher and higher and higher that it actually becomes an issue for the butterflies or actually the caterpillars hatching into butterflies themselves. So you do not want to have any kind of milkweed that stays up year round. Um, so I tell everybody, if the color is bright on the flower, you know it's the wrong one. A lot of times people are like, well, how do I know if I have the tropical? How do I know if I have uh, the native? If it has a bright colored flower, it's the wrong one. These ones all have a white, pink, or creamish colored flower on them. Um, it can kind of vary from plant to plant. This is the narrow leaf uh, milkweed. Um, and the flower on this is actually very pretty. I like this flower as well. So if you've got the brightly colored ones, you need to take those out. Um, that's definitely an issue uh, for the caterpillars. Um, the native one is going to go totally dormant. So don't panic in the wintertime when this one dies down. Um, it's going to completely die down. Just make sure you don't accidentally dig it up. So remember where you planted it um, and let it actually come up um, and, and be back in the garden year after year. So mine just came up. I planted mine two years ago. This is my second year with it and it's coming back really, really nice this year. Uh, much, much fuller. I already have flowers on some of mine. Um, so if you've bought milkweed here in the past, you know that this sells out very, very quickly. <laughs> the first day that we got milkweed this season, I think we sold out within the day. I want to say it was within four hours. Uh, the second time we got it, uh, we had it for a couple days. Now we have a really nice big stock of it in. Um, we even have a three pack, which I think is really awesome. So you get three plants in here. Uh, this one's $21.99. Um, so this is a really great deal because I think for most homes, you should have about seven or eight plants uh, to support uh, the caterpillar um, with how much they eat. They eat very, very, very quickly. I can't tell you how many calls we get where people are like, do you have more milkweed? Because mine have eaten it completely down and now they have nothing to eat. So they go through these plants so fast, like within days, you'll see a plant just totally gone. Uh, so to support uh, your little community that you have, it's probably best to have seven to eight plants in your garden. Um, we also have these incredibly full one gallons. Look how beautiful these are. These are absolutely full. Uh, these ones are $16.99. And if you look down inside it, I've noticed most of them actually have three little plants in here. So uh, this one's just absolutely jam packed. So this is really great because this is nice and big. So if you don't want to wait, or if you already have a nice couple of nice, really big ones, you just want to supplement with a few more here and there. This is a really great deal. Um, if you're starting out from scratch, I recommend getting a couple of the really big ones and then maybe supplementing a couple of the little guys in here as well. Um, it is a California name. Native, so you don't need to water it a whole lot, especially when it's very hot. So I definitely recommend having this in an area where you're hand watering um, or you're really comfortable controlling your sprinklers. Um, native plants do not like to be very wet when it's very warm. That's not natural. And uh, that winds up becoming an issue with them for having a lot of uh, fungal problems with different pathogens and stuff as well. So you want to make sure uh, that you're watering during the cool seasons. Like right now, we've got the May gray, we've got the June gloom that's great. Once we start getting into July and August, 
you want to slow down a little bit on the watering or else it's, they're going to be super confused and not very happy. Um, and then once they start dying down, you just want to let them die down naturally on their own as best you can. Once you start looking at going, okay, it's too straggly, I can't handle it anymore, you can go ahead and cut it down. Um, but the longer you can keep it up, the more it's even though it might be looking a little stressed, a little unhappy, not exactly in its prime like they are right now, they are still photosynthesizing and adding a lot of nutrients to the roots down below because they are going to go totally dormant and you want them to come back really nicely for you the next year. Um, I plant mine near my roses. Um, I also have a lot of pollinators growing underneath my roses, but it's nice because that's an area that I hand water so I can control that. Um, they do well in pots too. You want to make sure that they have really good drainage. They're not sitting in a saucer. They don't want to sit in their own water. Uh, you want them to be able to drain out naturally, um, but you want to use a really good sandy soil. I suggest using the um, cactus mix. You can mix it with a little bit of potting soil if you've got both. Uh, also just straight cactus mix is totally fine. Um, then once they go dormant, you can kind of hide them away, stash them in a side yard. When they come out and get full again, you can bring them back out again. Uh, so that's a totally great way to handle the water situation. Because I know a lot of people are like, oh, but my whole entire yard's on sprinklers. Like, how do I do this? So pots do work um, absolutely fine. And then that way you can uh, control the watering with that too. Um, so yeah, it's such a beautiful, beautiful plant, especially when it flowers. And how fun is it when you get the little babies on there? Um, it's really great because we get a lot of them on ours as well. So we're always walking by and checking um, and looking at the ones. And then whenever I spot one that has a little baby caterpillar on, I always bring it to uh, one of the little booths that we work in so we can watch it through the day, just eat away. And it's amazing, amazing how fast they work. It just blows my mind. Uh, when I watch them really go, I mean, they'll eat a whole leaf within a minute or two. Uh, it's pretty shocking how fast. So that's why having a nice supply is really important because they go through it really quickly. And the last thing you want to be doing is scrambling and trying to find more because uh, your caterpillar has eaten it all the way down to the ground. Um, but yeah, this is our plant of the week. It's really exciting. I'm so happy that we have this uh, back in stock uh, in here so we can supply you all with your native milkweed. Um, we are live, so if you guys have any questions, I'm here to answer questions for you as well. Uh, so if you're dropping your questions down below, if you didn't get a chance to watch this live and you still have questions, you can always uh, leave them in the comments down below and we'll do our best to get back to you with all of those. Um, and let's open it up for questioning. Thank you, Sarah. So yeah. the first question here says, what size pot should they be planted in? Can I plant more than one in the same pot? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so I would say each individual plant should probably be in a pot that's maybe about 18 inches in diameter. Um, they're not particularly deep rooted, so you can always use one of the wider, squattier pots. Um, I think it's really pretty. I do have a selection of some of these in pots as well, and I've kind of layered them. So I have taller pots to lower pots and smaller pots. Pots. Um, in my bigger pot, which I would say is about 24 inches across, I have a big one like this. Now there is three plants in here. Uh, they're planted very close together. So you can see they can be planted closely together. Um, they will reseed too if you let them go uh, to flower, uh, which is also really nice. Um, but if you're doing like singular ones, you can get away definitely with a smaller pot and then layering looks really, really nicely. So you have that kind of stage step up to larger plants, to smaller plants, and then allowing them to kind of reseed in some of the containers down below as well. Um, but they work great. Just make sure you don't have them sitting in a saucer because they absolutely don't like that. Uh, and make sure that you're slowing down on the watering once. It seems so counterintuitive, I understand, but once it starts getting warmer, you want to slow down on the water and you don't want to water on a really particularly hot day either awesome thank you sarah yeah. so do these new need full sun yes and full sun for these guys okay they can handle a little bit of shade the area i have mine in pots um is getting some morning sun i would say probably to about one o'clock um, and then it's in a really bright location so even though the sun has gone over my house at that point uh, they're still getting a lot of super bright indirect light at that point awesome thank you mm -hmm. do they like to be root bound they're okay with being root bound uh, you might need to occasionally kind of thin them out here and there. Um, they don't want to be, it's not like a succulent where like the tighter it is, the more big and full they're going to be. Not for a very long time. So maybe once they're starting to go a little bit dormant, that's when you can kind of separate them out if you're feeling like they're a bit too root bound. 
And what would you say are the best companion plants for milkweed? Okay, yeah. So any of the stuff that's going to give uh, food for the adult butterfly. So you want to do all the nectar plants. Um, we have Budlea, which they call butterfly bush, which is my favorite one of all the butterfly nectar plants. Uh, smells fantastic. It's got almost a sweet, bready kind of quality to it. I always tell everybody, think about King's Hawaiian bread. I know that sounds crazy, but it smells so good. They're beautiful, beautiful plants. In fact, everything behind me here is a mixture of native uh, and butterfly, bee, and hummingbird attracting plants. So this whole entire garden that we have here, um, which is actually a wildlife uh, certified habitat, which is really amazing that we got that, um, supports all of that. So they're looking for um, things like lantana, yarrow. I have yarrow right next to me here. They love this yarrow. Um, one thing that I tell people that kind of helps you understand what kind of um, plants butterflies are looking for is think about butterflies flies is being a helicopter and this is a landing pad they like stuff that they can typically land on so if you think about these things yarrow lantana um, pentas all has this kind of flat flower that has multiple multiple flowers here and you'll see them land on these and drink the nectar out of them uh, the butterfly bush has kind of a long uh, flower almost kind of looks like a lilac or um, maybe an upright wisteria, um, but it's multiple, multiple flowers on that as well. And they love the nectar out of that. So helicopter landing plants for butterflies <laughs> is what they, <laughs> what they tend to like. But we have a huge arrangement in this middle area of all the stuff that attracts the butterflies. We have great signage and stuff. So you can look at our signage and see uh, what kind of stuff we suggest. And of course, you can always ask us. Uh, a lot of us are planting uh, pollinator gardens. I I've planted a lot around my roses and I have a couple little pot areas uh, where I have all of those. And with the butterfly bush, um, there's large ones that get really, really big and there's small ones called microchip that are really cute and tiny and they're great companion plants for roses. I love it because I have, you know, my beautiful roses and I have low kind of spreading filler plants underneath it that almost just makes my roses look kind of like a really beautiful bouquet on its own just planted uh, and that purples and whites and creams and pinks just look so pretty. So on the butterfly bush, does yeah. that need full sun? Yes. Yeah, the butterfly bush definitely can't handle too much shade. Even the area where I have these planted in pots that's getting half, a little more than half day sun. Um, my butterfly bush there would probably not be too happy. It'd maybe be a little spindly uh, looking. I mean, it can handle it, but it's going to thrive and look its best, its fullest and most flowers uh, in a full sun area. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. So mm -hmm. for our native milkweed, yeah. would you fertilize them at all if they are in pots? Um, no, I don't fertilize mine. Um, I would maybe occasionally, and this is my second year with them and I haven't fertilized them yet. Something incredibly mild, uh, maybe with just a tiny, tiny bit of nitrogen, but I actually haven't even fertilized mine yet. And they are planted in cactus mix. So, you know, there's not a lot of nutrients in cactus mix. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Sarah. Mm -hmm. It looks like that's it for questions today. Nice. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I really, really enjoy doing these with you. Uh, we do uh, our live streams every Tuesdays and on Thursdays. Thursdays is always our plant of the week, so you get to see all the new stuff that we have in the store, uh, what we have a nice supply of at the moment. <laughs> this sells out quickly. Uh, usually, our plant of the week, I find, sells out pretty fast. So um, be sure to com come in, check it out. Uh, if you would like to, you can always call us and then place some um, on hold for yourself by making a payment over the phone. Uh, we can do that for you as well. Um, and then the... Um, on Tuesdays, or sorry, on Tuesdays, we always do uh, a different kind of gardening tip techniques. So I know last Tuesday we talked about uh, what to do in your garden in May. Uh, so always tune in for those. We do leave these in our Instagram and our Facebook uh, pages so you can see them in case you came in a little bit late to this. Make sure you tag all of your butterfly loving friends and let them know that we have milkweed. It is here finally. We get calls about this daily multiple multiple calls uh, so it's really happy to be able to say yes we finally have it um, and then make sure too that you sign up for our emails on our emails we tell you about all the really great things that we have in stock all the new things that we have going on any of our live streams coming up we do a really great checklist every month of what to do in your garden in case you missed that video uh, or if you need a refresher you can go back and check that out as well and then you know about all the new 
awesome things coming up. Uh, we do have a couple of new um, live events that we're going to be having as well, um, which we're really excited about. So you can get all that information there as well. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, again, my name is Sarah Smith. I'm a horticulturist here at Rogers Gardens. If you have any questions, leave them down below or give us a call here. Uh, we can always answer them for you over the phone and be well, be safe and happy gardening, everybody. Bye. UH.